For this chapter and slides, um, they'll be a little bit different for you to access and use. So they're actually in HTML because we're going to be looking at some things that are interactive and that require looking at the browser to explore. So once you download them, you'll see them as an HTML file. If you open that, it should open in one of your browsers. If you want a version of this in a PDF that you could print, you should be able to go into file and print and then choose one of your options to save as a PDF. And then that will give you something if you have like um, some kind of software where you annotate PDFs or something like that. So we're going to talk in this series of lectures for this chapter about um, some really cool graphics that you can use for creating things that are a little bit more interactive with R. These are all called HTML widgets. It's kind of a suite of new packages for you to explore. And a lot of them are pretty easy to use once you have gotten the hang of using ggplot and some of the other visualization techniques we've used in the class so far. Um, so for a long time, some very, very smart people have done a lot of work with exploring how to make graphics interactive in the sense that you can really kind of explore them and interrogate your data directly from the graphic. You can ask what point this is or kind of let me see these, these points more closely, things like that. Um, so far, there's not a lot of stuff that's really written in R itself, although I think that's changing. Certainly, ggviz is something to keep an eye on. And there are also some really cool ideas with Shiny now with brushing that will actually let you connect things across um, different, different plots and then crosstalk as well. But there are these wonderful and pretty easy to use uh, libraries that actually tap in to this kind of functionality in JavaScript. So what it's doing is R is kind of like writing it to JavaScript and then you can see it and explore it when you open it in a browser because your browser can, can, can understand that and run with that. So there's a website on this, and I put the link in here. It's got loads more information. I'll only today be able to give an introduction. We'll go a little bit more into depth uh, with Leaflet and a little bit with Plotly. But really, this is kind of like just to give you a taste of everything that you can do with this. And it's really loads and loads that you can do with these. All right, so as I mentioned, all of these are running. Um, they're writing out to JavaScript, and then JavaScript is, is what's allowing you to kind of interact with the visualizations. And what they actually do is they take the data that's being shown by your vis visualization, and they bind that to different parts of the graphics. And that lets you do things like zoom in and pan around. And you can also react to different things, like you can click on, on a spot, and it will give you a pop-up. So let's go into the showcase on the page that I showed you before. And this has information on a number of packages in this HTML widgets kind of suite of packages. Each of these, if you click on them, it will show you examples and then give you a link to somewhere you can go for even more information about that package. But you can see already, this is the kind of graphic these HTML widgets create. Uh, Leaflet's very good with maps, but it lets you zoom in and zoom out and you can pan around. And a lot of times it will let you interact by allowing uh, pop-ups. So when you click on things, it will show something. Um, I think in this case, it doesn't have pop-ups enabled. And then there are all kinds of things too, like there are ones for networks that will kind of let you get in and explore a network. And then also some different ones um, for doing more traditional plots, but where it allows you to look at the different elements of the plot. And then also for time series, where you can really go in and um, explore different parts really closely and kind of, kind of scroll around and see different pieces of information. So we're going to look more closely at these. As I mentioned, we'll go more deeply into Leaflet and then um, a little bit with Plotly. And then I'll just give a, a taste of examples for some of the others. So as I mentioned, there are a number of these. They've put these down. Some of the things they're good at are mapping, certainly with Leaflet. Um, doing time series plots, we'll look at, at digraphs for that. There's some now for working with network data. Um, the data tables is very convenient, and this will look familiar to you because when you, when you look at a data frame in R Markdown, as you're doing kind of chunk by chunk with going through the code, it will actually show it to you using something created by um, by data tables where it allows you to scroll through and then search and all of that. 
So these are incredible packages. When you use them and you create a, 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 um, a visualization with them, you do need to render it into an HTML. So you can do it directly in R, and R's actually got a viewer that, that runs a browser that, that can interpret those, so we can look at it that way. Um, but if you want to share this with other people, it's often going to be useful to do an R Markdown document where you where you put this, you render it into HTML. Um, that means that you will need to open it with a browser to really see what you want to look at. There are a few other limitations as well. Um, one of them is that a lot of these kind of wrappers were written by different people, um, which is wonderful. That's part of the, the joy of open source software, but it also means that sometimes the conventions for kind of calling things are a little bit different. So you have to really dig into the documentation and the help files to make sure you understand, like if I want to show the plots with this, I need to make sure I, I, I express it this way and, and all of that. Um, a lot of what we've been doing with the tidyverse, we've gotten a little bit spoiled because a lot of times it will let us express things the same way across a lot of different functions. And as you work with the functions in these different HTML widgets, some of them are different from what we've learned in tidyverse in terms of the, the conventions and the way we call things and set colors and all of that. Um, and then also just different from each other. So it does take a little bit more time kind of exploring the help files and looking at examples to make sure that you get the code right. And then the other thing is that some of these, and this has changed over the past few years since I first started teaching this, but some of these are still in development. And that means that what they're using right now for the, the functions and for the conventions and the arguments you can call, that, might, that syntax might change a little bit in the future as they continue to be developed. But all that being said, these are really wonderful, they're really powerful, and they, they give you a great chance to create some really interesting visualizations that users can get in and explore. And even you yourself, when you're trying to explore your data, it gives you a much nicer chance to be able to really interact with it and explore it and look for outliers and which ones those are and things like that.